Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Pubs video on this wonderfully wet and windy September afternoon. I'm here in Kentish Town today, which is an area I know particularly well. And uh, it's a little bit out of the way, not really on the tourist trail. You wouldn't really come here unless you had a reason to or if you lived in the area, but uh, it's actually packed with some surprising gems in terms of Victorian pubs. I'm going to start with, uh, as, as is often the case, the absolute best, in my opinion, the Pina. Cheers from the Pineapple. Built in 1868. I think it's a particularly fine example of a Victorian backstreet boozer. Very much a locals community kind of pub today. It was threatened with closure in the early 2000s, around 2001. It was a very high profile campaign to keep it going and uh, very happy to report it's still here today. It's still going strong. An example of the strong community spirit here is an Easter bonnet parade every Easter Sunday. It's a tradition that's been going since the 1960s, perhaps with the old break here and there. Still doing it now. People design their own hats, parade them around the pub. By special permission of uh, Rob the boss. Um, coming behind the bar uh, for a moment just to show you this wonderful back bar, which is a pretty, pretty unique, pretty impressive survival of uh, Victorian pub architecture. There's this sort of three panel etched glass mirror. Sorry, Jeff. Do you need to get in? Jeff's going to you know, make sure the whole place doesn't fall down. Okay, so three panel etched glass, three different. You can't really see the middle one so much because the clock's in the way. This is some. Um, French embossing again, our old friend, probably acid <coughs> to um, engrave, uh, etch, I should say, the, uh, the mirrors here. Uh, uh, urns of flowers, but you can see this pineapple motif is repeated here and there. And also there's a collection of pineapple memorabilia along this middle shelf here. Lovely old clock. Uh, four pilasters with, I suppose, Corinthian columns up there. Wonderful old, I think original, whiskies, brandies, wines, kind of coloured glass right at the top. It's an absolute beauty. On the bar, there is the uh, eponymous pineapple ale, which is Marston's, Marston's pedigree rebadged, and four other guest beers on the hand pumps, plus a bunch of other lagers and so forth. Hard to imagine in the, the rain and the wind on a, a grim September day, but they have Morris dancing outside here, uh, I think just one day possibly in the summer. It is an absolutely cracking boozer. Thai food as well, if that's your sort of thing, I am to think it's a pretty good example thereof. All the character you could possibly hope for. Walking down College Lane here, which is a, I believe rather, ancient alleyway leads from one part of Kentish Town towards Hampstead Heath. Down that little alley there is a pub called The Vine, which uh, I think we'll probably skip over on this particular occasion. It's gone a bit foodie slash gastro. But this, uh, if we carry on in this direction, we do eventually get to a rather splendid pubby pub. College Lane then leads on to this little Georgian gem of a street, Little Green Street, thus named because at one time Highgate Road down the bottom was called Green Street or Green Road, given that it was leading to Hampstead Heath, the, the, the green I suppose. All of these Georgian cottages along here have these bay fronted windows. I'm led to believe were at one time shops, now all private residences. Alas, the lampposts there are electric now, but you could just about imagine this lit by gaslight on a, a misty autumnal evening. Really uh, surprisingly beautiful little part of Kentish Town here. That brings us to the Southampton Arms on Highgate Road. 
Sorry about the traffic noise in the background. 1930s pub. Not a particularly venerable pub, but the beer and cider selection inside, absolutely very notable. six ciders at the back when it's available quite a cider fan so I'm going for the uh, cider bus today curiously adorned I don't know what to call it sort of cistern in the gents lavatories so there we have the Southampton Arms uh, a little bit difficult to uh, to do talking to my imaginary friends in this little box here on a stick inside it's uh, at this time of day a sort of quiet contemplative Hub, and I thoroughly support that and don't want to be the idiot ruining the atmosphere. Full and last here, I don't know if you can see the sign. Fell out to include this for the sake of completeness. This is just in Kentish Town. And uh, I think, you know, go any further up Highgate Road here and you've pretty much been Highgate by most accounts. It's, um, it's of some historical interest because of this story that this was at one time the last pub in London, essentially, before you got out into the countryside proper. And the coachmen carrying passengers would shout the bull and last. It was originally just called the bull in uh, coaching in and they would shout the bull and last as in the last stop within London. I'm not sure if that was when heading out of London or heading into London. Um, to be honest, I've never really got on with this pub. It's gone very gastro as long as I've known it. And the beer offering is all a bit hipster, grapefruity craft beer, IPA sort of stuff. And um, I walk past this pub very often because it's near the corner of uh, the entrance to Hampstead Heath over there. And I've only been in perhaps three times and always found it a bit of a disappointment. So I'm going to skip this one and just uh, and carry on. I think, um, at least in my humble opinion, I think Kentish Town has more characterful pubs to offer. Okay, here we are at the Bullen Gate at the base of Highgate Road, quite close to Kentish Town Station. Purportedly, the original name of this was the Boulogne Gate, which commemorates Henry VIII's victory in France over the French. Uh, in 1544. I'm a tiny bit sceptical about that. It, it's one of those things that's sort of much loved of uh, books on pub names, a bit like the uh, the Bag of Nails being a corruption of Bacchanals, but um, it, it may well be true, who knows. Once I believe quite a prolific gig venue, and it was acquired by Young's in 2014. They then set about a fairly substantial programme of refurbishment and uh, we now have the somewhat gastro pubified version of it that we see today but there are at least some still original features surviving a very literal depiction of a bullying gate and that arch above the door Once again, some fairly impressive glass etching there on the back bar, and it's broadly described as being in the Gin Palace style, which we now know, of course, to take with a slight pinch of salt. Of course, those of you who are Taylor Swift fans, <laughs> I love the ridiculous notion that there might be some overlap between the sort of people who are interested in old pubs and Taylor Swift that, that, that there is zero intersection there isn't there but um, uh, th this pub was actually used in one of Taylor Swift's videos I think the song is called Endgame and you get sort of brief glimpses of possibly a bit of the downstairs bar possibly a bit of the upstairs bar so there we go the uh, the Bullingate it's um I don't know it, it 
kind of has this slightly soulless feel to it. I can't really put my finger on it. it in my opinion, what has really worked against it is the sort of Faro and Ball-esque paint job, the kind of turquoisey, that horrible color that you see in anything that's trying to signify it's a gastro pub and no longer an old-fashioned boozer. Okay, staying on the Taylor Swift theme, possibly ill-advisedly because I don't think it really appeals to my core demographic here, but uh, behind me I have the Kentish Delight kebab shop which also features in that video. Well, I, I say it features in the video, but the reality is I think they filmed some footage there which they didn't ultimately use. There's possibly a bit near the end of the video where they're eating kebabs or something. You don't care, do you? <laughs> Get back to the pubs, Tweedy! Just around the corner here from the Bullengate and Kentish Delight is Falkland Place, a small alleyway that was also used, actually featured in that Taylor Swift Endgame video. On a great vantage point, right in the middle of the traffic. But here is the assembly house, which almost directly faces spinning around with some terrible camera work there, Kentish Town Station. One of the first things you may be greeted by if arriving in Kentish Town, this is another Green King pub now. I originally knew this as a bit more independent than that. A bit chain pubby, but I think the, uh, the interior definitely has some merit. Um, the back bar here again a uh, little bit reminiscent of the pineapple quite impressive uh, but the perhaps the best section lies behind me these mirrored panels with more etched glass various different motifs from nature there there has been quite a lot of modernization but that's uh, perhaps the nicest corner e even during the time that I've known this pub uh, the interior has changed somewhat substantially but there's still this this corner just off behind my shoulder over there which um, I think uh, is uh, very indicative of this sort of late Victorian again we you know we would lazily call this gin palace in style whether that term is uh, actually appropriate or not it's a different issue but um, uh, really quite a lavish interior so I'm back where I started outside the pineapple uh, to sign off I uh, hope that tour of Kentish Town pubs was interesting uh, I think there is a uh, or at least a couple of gems here in Kentish Town worth heading out the centre for particularly the Pineapple and the Southampton Arms. So um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.